I, I think the series of dialogues that this base, that this book is based upon and the continuing series of dialogues that continues to today and will continue in the future are very important venues for Chinese and Westerners, mostly a lot of Americans, to have in-depth conversations about their fundamental thinking about the world. Unfortunately, the relations are so bad between the countries now that there are not very many venues like this that are created. When, when Henry first started this series, I was a little afraid that he wouldn't be able to do it because I thought many American experts might be a little afraid uh, to participate with a Chinese think tank. And the fact that he is, has been able to accomplish this is, is, is really a, a great accomplishment because there are, as I said, there, there's no other place where senior Americans and senior Chinese can have this kind of conversation with each other. Open, thoughtful, sort of open-ended. Uh, I, I think this is really a, an important thing to be going on right now at the time when um, relations are sort of the worst I've seen since the reform and opening up started in China. Um, another thing that this dialogue accomplishes is that I, I think it's very good that it forces American scholars and American thinkers and former politicians to think about how to explain their position to China. In, in, in the U.S., this is not only Americans, but Westerners in general, uh, there's a lot of what we call preaching to the choir. Basically, you're talking to a group of people who already think the same way you do and agree with what you say. And it's, it's, I was struck in these dialogues with the fact that people had to explain their position to China. And I thought that's very useful as an exercise for senior thinkers to have to go through that process and say, and I'm talking to people that already think the same way I do and are likely to clap no matter what I say. I have to explain my deepest positions to China and, and the rest of the world. So I, I think this is a, it's a phenomenally important uh, set of a book and especially the dialogues are, are, are very important. Uh, there are a lot of issues raised in the book that I that come up in the dialogues that I think are the critical international relations issues that are going to continue in the future. And we need it's very helpful to think about how to deal with them. Uh, for example, there was a, a lot of discussion about the nature of power shifts that are going on. The, the power shift from from Western you know, European slash American power to more globalized and more Asian power. This is a big change in the world. And it's happened almost suddenly. I mean, I'd say within the last 20 years, it's really become apparent. It's important that we're talking about this and that we think about how to manage it, how to make it where it makes everybody better off rather than just, okay, England defeated France, France is least less well, well off and now England's better off. We, we need a, a situation where it's not zero sum, it's positive sum. And it, it could be, what I really fear is it could be very negative sum. Uh, war is not, you know, zero sum is a lot better than war, which is very negative sum. So I think having these discussions can help people understand. Well, if, if they're willing to listen, there's a big danger of people not being willing to listen to these discussions. I, I see a lot of, you know, for, for most American politicians, the default position is to attack China because it's costless to them. Uh, it, it doesn't really require a lot of thought and it, it makes them sound kind of tough. Uh, but at least these dialogues are here so people who are seriously interested and seriously open-minded can think about how to manage this relationship and how to make, make it better so it's better for everybody. There are other power shifts. There's a lot of talk in, in some of the dialogues about the power shift 
from government to transnational institutions or government to um, to private sector institutions in some case. Uh, I, I think those are very interesting and very useful dialogues to think about not only how the world is going externally, but how it's going internally within countries. Uh, I'm, I'm quite skeptical that states are losing power, especially after what we've seen in the last three years. I think states have shown that they, when they want to, they can have a lot more power than any of the transnational or private sector actors. But that's that's a, a point that we should discuss further. Um, I thought the discussion that, that Henry had with uh, Graham Allison and with others on the Thucydides trap and whether this was a, a necessary situation where that would almost automatically lead to war. That's also very useful, especially because now we're in a world where, as, as was pointed out, where the United States and China really don't have any existential threats against each other. I mean, I, I, I keep telling colleagues and former colleagues in the United States, U.S. and China really don't have much to fight about. <laughs> you know, there, there's not really very much point of contention, and you have to go looking for it. And unfortunately, some people are looking for it. Um, you know, I, I, heaven forbid that I would disagree with uh, Gray Mallison on the meaning of, of Thucydides. But it, uh, as if I remember reading it a long time ago, the message that I took from it was that the war started largely because of honor and pride and insults, that uh, essentially the Spartans were insulted by the Athenians. The Athenians went around insulting just about everybody. And that was a large motivation for the war. And I think in addition to Gray Madison's lesson about the Thucydides trap, that's a really important lesson too. Because I mean, for example, uh, Nancy Pelosi's trip to Taiwan was pointless, accomplished, uh, who knows why she did it, but it was almost a calculated provocation, calculated insult. And people need to understand how dangerous that can be. You know, sort of people that live on, you know, there's a term among young people in the United States called dissing. And they will kill each other if they get disrespected on the street. Uh, that's that's something that international leaders need to understand. They need to avoid this kind of disrespectful behavior, which can lead to untold bad consequences. Uh, there's also a lot of discussion about where globalization is going. What it, what it means for trade in the future, uh, what it means for sort of the growth of neoliberal institutions. I especially enjoyed the discussion with uh, Angus Deaton and Anne Case uh, about inequality. I, I think it's important that we take to heart the fact that most everybody here, most everybody on this call is a fairly high level of income. And there's a lot of inequality that has grown and a lot of it will be blamed on globalization, I think unfairly. I mean, in, in the United States, for example, uh, median real wages have not gone up at all, zero growth since 1979. That's median real wages. There's been a big transfer of wealth from labor to capital owners and to rentiers. Um, and I think that was caused largely by domestic policies, changes in the banking laws, uh, changes in refusal to enforce antitrust law, um, uh, low interest rates, all of that goes to contribute to growth of the wealth of already wealthy people. But it's much easier to blame China and to blame globalization. This book the discussion helps us avoid that. Um, and I also enjoy discussions throughout about how to use history to analyze the present. I, I thought those were really interesting. I'd really like to hear a lot more about that. I, I would like to have once, I, I'm encouraging some Chinese scholar to write a readable 500 page book that gives me a good interpretation of Chinese history. Not a list of the 
of the uh, dynasties, but something where I can put it in context. In the same way, after spending a lifetime of reading Western history, I can understand what was what the issues were in the West. So, um, and anyway, just to sum up, I, I think this book contributes a lot to our discussions in the future. I, I think it, it's a, a starting point for people who want to understand the real issues that the world is facing and for having an open discussion. You know, we're not going to agree with each other necessarily, but have an open discussion so we can at least understand each other. So thank you very much.